I'm 29 years old, I live in San Francisco, and I'm not a millionaire. Although, I do have several friends who are millionaires, on paper. Now what does that mean, on paper? And why are they millionaires? Well, they work for the latest.com and they have a lot of stock or options. Which means that they may have an office space, they might even have a website, and they may or may not produce anything tangible. But it doesn't matter, because there's great speculation that they might, and if they don't, who cares? Because it's all about hype. My rich friends love talking about what their company makes in terms of money and what it's actually worth. But it doesn't always make sense. To find out the market capitalization, you take the number of shares they have and multiply it by the price of the stock on any one day. Which simply means that the rules for the internet economy were written by the same guys who created the tax codes. To actually figure it out how it's done, you have to compare two companies. One from the old economy and one from the new economy. I'm standing outside one of the factories owned by the Interstate Bakeries Corporation. They're the makers of Wonder Bread, Ring Dings, Ding Dongs, Devil Dogs, and Twinkies. They're number 452 on the Fortune 500 list. And last year, their net income was $126 million. But they're worth about eight times as much, $1 billion. Not bad. Now, if you compare Interstate Bakeries with eBay, the popular online auction house who's almost solely responsible for keeping the beanie baby craze alive, you'll see that they don't really compare. Last year, eBay's net income was $10.8 million, but their market cap was a staggering $30 billion, more than 2,700 times as much as their net income. So, Twinkies, $1 billion, Beanie Babies, $30 billion. Okay, so maybe these are two unusual, isolated examples. So how about another scenario? Why don't we take cars, which take you someplace, and internet portals, which also take you someplace? Now this is an example of traditional old economy. A GM showroom, Chevrolet trucks, big tonnage of steel. Net income last year, $6 billion. Number one on the Fortune 500 list. But they're only worth about eight times as much. $52 billion. Last year, Yahoo made $61 million. Not bad. But their market cap was a staggering $103 billion. Nearly 2,000 times as much just for letting you on the internet. Now why? Who knows? Anybody's guess. But the real question is, do you see the USA from your Chevrolet or do you, Yahoo? Me? I think I'm gonna eat my Twinkie. And uh, maybe hold on to this little guy for a while. So reporter Sean McGann visits the University of California at Berkeley to see what online college life might be like from a student's perspective. A debate is brewing on college campuses all across America. Its outcome could seriously affect the lives of college students. It's not about school prayer or uniforms or even secret societies for future presidents. It's about online education. So let's take a look at what some students could stand to lose. At your traditional college, this would be the center of campus life. It's a gathering place for students to exchange ideas and cultures and information. In an online education, this would all be empty and all they would have left would be a lonely chat room. This is your typical college experience the lecture hall. Every seat in the house filled with students. You've got the brainiac down in front and the sleeping guy way in the back while the crazy professor is doing wild experiments. You miss one class, no one misses you. you. Miss more than one class, you can miss the boat. But if you log online, you can miss the whole experience. The college bookstore is everything you need. T-shirts, textbooks, buzzy pom-poms. But at the online university, where are you going to find all this stuff? eBay? Yahoo? Amazon.com? Off-campus eateries are a wonderful opportunity to take the discussion out of the classroom and into a local cafe. They're rich in social life, bottomless cups of coffee, and blueberry scones. At the Cyber University, I guess there's always Webfan. And if you're so inclined, you could put yourself through a grueling hazing period. 
cleaning the bathroom with a toothbrush, cutting the lawn with scissors, painting your skin green, all for the sake of the fraternity. And what's the online equivalent? Getting your friends together and forming an e-circle. And finally, there's the big game. School against school, rival against rival. The balance between body and mind. Now, what would the big game be in an online university? Doom? Obviously, I have a lot of questions about this online university. <laughs>